everyone happy saturday and i thought i would pop the camera up before i got started because i wanted to personally invite you all to a birthday celebration i had this idea at the beginning of the month that wow would it be cool to hang out with everyone in a zoom session and then follow it up with a unique book structure that um you guys can make from the the bundles and stuff that we'll make in our zoom workshop so it's called tamashi bundles and it's really the spirit of working with paper and bundling it i don't know about you all but i spend a lot of time in my studio as i'm organizing all of my work and what have you i love making bundles i also like making what i call my studio cleanup um, journals and those of you who've been hanging out with me for a while know what they are and you've done a lot of them yourself so on it's going to be Thursday, Thursday, the 27th of April. I thought we would do a live Zoom session starting at noon Pacific time. And we'll hang out for about three or four hours and we'll talk. I'll answer a lot of questions and we'll just get into the spirit of making the bundle. Tamashi is the is the Japanese word that means spirit or soul. And it's like the element that fits in with the aesthetics of Japanese art. And many of the of you that have been following me on Patreon know we've been studying these nine aesthetics of Japanese art and have really learned a lot about um, the sort of the difference in the feeling and the emotions that go into the Asian um, versus the, the way we would describe our Western practices. And they're, they're, they're all great um, and just different ways to approach it. So I thought I would like to really spend time flushing that out and show you how I create my bundles that then are ready when I want to do collage, when I want to make books, I have all these bundles ready to go because I've sat down and just used my quiet time to make them. They, we will also deal with the elements of art. So color, texture, pattern, um, things like that, shapes, you know, things that are similar about a lot of our pieces. So I'll show you through using the elements of art how I literally can put bundles together that work together every time and that when I come back to do a project, I'm not digging through trying to find papers because you know us, we're, you know, we're paper people. We have paper everywhere. Right now you see I have a whole rack of stuff here that's organized. I have flat files open with stuff that I'm working have a lot of paper and I've just always worked on unique ways to organize it so when I am ready to go do a project I don't wear myself out by trying to find everything first <laughs> you know you know that feeling you spend time trying to find everything and by that time you're like yikes I don't have any energy left to do anything so that's what we're going to do Tamashi bundles and then the second day which will be Friday I'll release a pre-recorded book project. I decided to do the pre-record on the book project because I really wanted to be able to go slow. You guys could take your time. It's an easy no stru so structure, but it's really unique. It really still speaks book. You'll love it. It's kind of like a junk journal-y kind of book because it'll have all kind of fabrics and lace and your papers and everything in it. So please join me. So many of you have already signed up for it. A big thank you. I can't wait to hang out with you all, but we'll have a big Zoom room so we can get as many in as wants to hang out. And uh, you can be on the screen. You don't have to be on the screen. You, you know, like you can do your thing once you come into the room. Love you all. And now down to the table and hopefully you'll hang out with me for my birthday. Take care. See you soon. So we are back to continue to work on our next page spread. And I went back to our February printables because I really kind of wanted to work with this image here. But I also pulled out some other images, not only from that kit, but some of my own drawings, um, not drawings, photos that I've taken when I've gone on archeological um, expeditions. And I feel like this wall right here, I love how those blocks are just, some kind of way sandwiched in there like puzzle pieces. And y'all, how heavy these box blocks are? They're huge. These blocks are huge. And they're all in there like puzzle pieces. But since I'm working on this spread right here, I thought maybe this might be kind of cool to go on this page a bit. And um, then we have this fold out here that is using some of this um, 
what is it, you know, scrapbooking paper that I um, stain and everything. We have the back side of this piece that we want to work with. This is that finished one here. Oh, I know. I forgot to, <laughs> when I was done and cleaning up my table, I realized I had never put our little sticker. So I left it at the top of my um, work desk there. I don't want to get this on there. I love it. So I was trying to decide if I was going to do it as a full piece or just as a piece like it's a, uh, notations from a document let's go ahead and cut it and uh figure out what i'm going to do probably you all were probably shouting that to me like you didn't put that down and it's kind of nice to overlap it over top of the um the tape that i already kind of put down there because i feel like that integrates it um i think i'm just going to cut it square like as if it were a label just put it right here like that like that okay cool so that finishes it off and it kind of you know makes our own kind of funky little label so I like that so I just wanted to make sure I did that before we moved on so now let's go here to the next group of pages and let's get to working. So I'm pulling from a few things. I was thinking that I definitely wanted to use this because we have this area at the top here. I'm okay with this down here, but I'd like to put something there. So let's go ahead and uh, rip this. This is on our onion skin. So I definitely wanted something that was gonna be translucent as well. Okay. Extra over there. And I kind of just want to put it here, but I want to be able to see. So I think what I'm going to do is just do a ripped edge. Let's just do kind of a ripped edge there. So that could go down and then it's just like this brick wall, but we still have all that staining underneath there, which I like. So I think that'll go there. And um, I want to work this piece. Okay, the other thing I wanted to do getting started is I definitely want to work on more of, I want to do some more stamping. I love it. So I think I'll use the section that I hadn't used on the previous pages, and I'm going to use this onion skin here. This is the traditional onion skin. Some of the vintage stuff that I have, it's, it's you know, cockled, it's a lot thicker, but I had some of it, so let's just go ahead and grab that. And uh, let's go ahead and ink this up. I don't know if you guys got a chance to get any of this ink and play with it like this. If you did, let me know in the comments. Or we're all in Premiere now. Let me know. I love it. I just think it is so effective. Alrighty, just put it down there on this onion skin. And uh, I wanted to do this on the onion skin because I want to have a piece of this ready to go. But that's going to dry nicely because see how it just really bleeds on, and on that onion skin. It looks so official. Okay, let's put that there. And um, I want to also have a bit of it to go with um, 
just taking my top off. Oh, it's a little hot now. Um, let me see what else I want to stamp some more stuff up. So that'll be drying there. Um, maybe I would tear a bit of that and just put it across here too. Oh, you know what? Maybe we'll do this on this side. Maybe we'll kind of put this on this side. Figure out which color. I have a tendency to use this darker one for that. Okay. Get it all figured out. So I wanted to do that. Um, and I also wanted to use some of the vintage paper. So maybe I might do some of that as well. So I'm going to keep those together because those will work. I also pulled out our mask make pieces because this is a good time to, you know, remember those and you want to keep those in the mix. So I was trying to see which ones I thought would work. Put this there would work nicely here. Or I could also put this image, where is it, on this side. Oh, I could use both of them. So this kind of, this one would probably work nicely there. And this bottom one would work nicely over here. So maybe we'll split the document up and use it like that. That'll go there. And then on this page, I was thinking about putting... Remember, these can also be torn down, you know, to make them fit. We did do some narrow ones. Size the page. This is really drying nicely. Oh, I love it. You can actually read it. I mean, you know, as much as reading can be on a, on a rubber stamp. This one fits nice and I like the colors. I feel like the colors and the scripting goes nicely. Okay, that's in the running. These colors work nicely too. I think I like the scripting on this one here where it goes there. There. This one's nice. It fits good. There. This one is a little wide. <coughs> this one is a little wide, so it's between these two. <coughs> I'm gonna go with this one because I like the colors and I like where the scripting goes. Okay, put these aside for the next time. Goes right there. Okay, so now this one will take up the full thing. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put it down, and then I'm gonna end up using. Oh, that looks good there. That actually really looks good there. Okay. And then I have these, <clears throat> these notes here. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also have some of this paper. All kind of stuff in here, though. Let me just, oh, you know, this yellow here would be really cool to do some stamping on. Uh, it's a piece of um, vintage paper, but, you know, it's like just a bit that got torn off. So let's go ahead and put some scripting on that. Let me get the other ink. Let me get the other one I haven't used. Where is it?
Let's use this one here. Okay. Get a piece of it and then just do an overprint so that might as well just get all the ink just first. Um, always looking for a piece that I can use that you know gets extra stuff on it. Let's just take this bit of onion skin here. Those just put them side by side and then any extra will go on here. No need to waste ink. That way we get a full print. Okay, perfect. That looks good. That's a nice piece. You can literally take your scraps and just print them up to get some good images to work with. Okay. Love this ink. This color, I mean, I just I'm crazy. I love this ink, but I'm crazy about this color. This is a new color I got, so I really like it. Okay, so I'm gonna put these here so we have those little bits because maybe maybe we could take a bit of this even and put it on here. So we're gonna we're gonna add those afterwards. Let me just go ahead. Let's go ahead and and commit this because I feel like that's ready to go down. So we'll use some. Um, I'll just use the PVA. Save the Giotto bit. Okay. Let me just kind of get I just kind of smooth it around with the, the head of the glues. Just to kind of get it everywhere and break up the globs. Okay. Alrighty. So let's get this down here. Alrighty. And all these pieces that we have sticking up from before, you know, at some point we can glue those down. You know, I may want to stick some of these, uh, like the images underneath it a little bit to integrate it. So that's why we, you know, as I said before, we leave all those pieces up. But I do like this. Let's go ahead and get this piece on here. I like this too. So I'm going to use the Uhu for this because it's the onion skin and we don't need it to be very aggressive. This is strong enough to hold it. Alrighty. Okay. So this will go right here. Let's go ahead and get it on here. I like the way it's going to um, kind of overlay on, um, I feel like I could use a little bit more glue here. Maybe I'll look at the Giotto just a little bit. And let's pull this out too, so that it'll wrap around nicely. Okay. Get this edge. Okay. Okay. Get a little bit. I have a little bit of over inking on there. I'm just gonna just grab a baby wipe and just kind of clean it off a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, so that's good. And I kind of know I want to do something on top of it. I haven't decided if I'm going to get a little bit of this maybe. <clears throat> like some field notes. <clears throat> huh. Yeah, let's just get just a little bit of this at the bottom. Let's rip this. Oh, that's perfect. That's nice. Just kind of like some field notes, you know, about the place, etc. You know, I do that a lot. Anyhow, when I'm in the field, I have a uh, field notes kind of bulk in. I'm always like taking the notes and trying to even take bits of um, a lot of times dirt samples and things like that from the land, I'm making notes of it. So that's pretty much how that goes. Anyway, alrighty. So that looks good. So just like it's notes, you know, we got this wall here. It integrates nicely with that stamp with the. Um, the paper. Hmm. I don't think uh, this onion skin was too crazy about the the Uhu. It prefers, it seems like it prefers the Giotto. Maybe I just didn't put enough of it down too. Alrighty. So that looks good. I really like the way all of this is the colors are working. I like the abstract nature of the the prints behind it and everything, but we still have some nice visuals. You know, that push and pull of images to sort of abstract. Okay, now we need to work on this side and I still want to integrate some of these papers. I really feel like this would go here nice. Let me just go ahead and rip this. Just kind of get it set up to figure out what I want to do with it. And see, this would be a nice strip left over to print on. That's how this one was. It was like the bottom of the page or something. And I used it. But this I really want to put down right here. So we're just going to go ahead and put that, about that much of it. Okay. Use the Uhu on this one. This is the Asian paper, so it's going to be great. Ready? That's good. See that there? It looks really good. I love that. But that's my scripting there, and then with the the vintage documents is nice. I kind of feel like I'm definitely going to still leave this open, even for a while, even if I finish this page, um, because it just gives places for us to come back and tuck things. I can even ultimately make this a pocket if I want. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to overdo that one. I'm going to leave it. This would be nice right there at the top. Look at that. That's good. Let's put that down. Here again, let's just grab the Uhu, because this is the Asian paper. It's thin and it's strong, so it'll, it'll be fine with this. If I don't glue it, to the surface here. It's so thin the glue went through and stuck it to the page. Okay, let's get this right up here. Oh, that's good. Wow. The way that yellow just goes down and it's translucent. And it's nice because this ink is permanent. It's a permanent ink, which is so once it once it dries, it's, it glues back down nicely. You know, like it, it takes the moisture. 
nicely. Really like that. Okay. So I guess doing it like that, I just turned this into a pocket, which is cool. I'll leave that like that is because this is glued down, which is fine. Okay, I really am liking that page. It's coming together. So let's go to our ephemera. And let's just go ahead and work with this, the darker image. Because I think these tones work quite well with this page. Like if I had left the page lighter, like maybe a page like this, and I think this color palette goes well with it. But since we're working on with these colors, I think this one works well. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these white edges off first so I can sort of figure out how much... I need to well, get rid of some of this, leave on there. Okay. All righty. I'm loving it. So I was kind of thinking about sort of just kind of fussy tearing this. make this more narrow let's narrow it down some now since i see my width i, I want to see some of the paper and i don't want this to be i want it to look more like you know a document more so let's just okay okay so let's see so this one would go here I think I'm just going to fussy tear this a little bit. Try not to tear any of the critters. Try to preserve it and just go right across the top. And should I go all the way across or should I leave this little piece there? This one's going to go on this side. So I'll just go all the way across. This one's going to go over here. I need to get some of this off. And then I think what I'm going to do is take some of this and put it. Oh, I like that. That'll go at the bottom. That's perfect. So it finishes it that way. And then on this side, we're going to use this piece. And that actually, wow, it works perfectly in with this gridding. And then this sort of top piece is a part of the document. Well, I can glue that down because that's translucent. Definitely like this. Okay, let's go ahead and get this down. So I'm going to just go ahead and glue this all the way down flat. I'm not going to make it a pocket or anything like that because, you know, I don't like every page a pocket or something. Document, it's nice to have a few of them here and there. This one I'm gonna use the Giotto. And get this on here. I like the way this page is coming together. This is nice. Okay. Okay. Let me just pull this out so we can get a nice smooth surface here. And then this piece right here, I'm going to just put the whole piece down, even though that white is there because it'll just break it up and we're still going to be able to see through it because of the, uh, this, this is the onion skin is so translucent. That was just that over, 
printed piece, but you know, you never know how you're going to use the pieces. So might as well, oops, go with it. So let's put this here. Yeah, I like that. That works nicely. Okay. As you can see. Okay. Okay. So. Now let's get this on the other side. Let's look at our glue book. I'm going to put this down first. This onion skin. And we'll use the Giotto. And just a little bit of this paper will come through, but this, I like when I take the scrapbooking paper and stain it. It is nice, but I, you know, it's not like a central, so much paper for me, but I do like the fact that. We'll be able to see bits of it, you know, and see through it a bit and all that. Okay. Oh, my fingers are really sticky. I have my baby wipe here. Let me wipe them off because this is crazy. It was really sticky. cards. They're perfect for um, for using them to smooth your papers down. So don't don't throw away the well first of all you know don't ever give your key cards back to the hotel in the first place because all your information is on there. Phone number, address, credit card information, everything is on that key card so first of all i don't like giving them back <laughs> yeah they say they clean them i'm sure they clean them because they like to reuse them but you don't know where that data is going you don't know you know half if they don't trust us you know they got to have all our information and have to take a deposit and all that why should we trust them with our information so first of all i make it a habit <laughs> to take the key cards back Secondly, they're great for smoothing out our papers when we collage. So there you have it. The free art tool, well, not so much free because you did pay for it. It's included in the cost of the hotel room. <laughs> okay, that looks good. I love it. Uh, and that little bit of burgundy behind it, so it picks it up or a little bit of, and then it opposite, See, this is what I, you know, of course, what I like about these kind of journals and sort of my style of this cabinet of curiosities is I like the abstract, the ink blots, you know, the, the, you know, again, that's, you know, juxtaposed against our old documents and scripting and, you know, just this mixture, this, in, this infusion of, um, let me just rip this a little bit, this little piece is going to annoy me, this infusion of the unexpected um, in our journal. I just, this just makes me really happy. The combination of, of things and vintage paper and oh, I love it. And so this goes like that. Let me just get this back around a little better. Okay. So so it kind of goes from this page to here. I really like that quite a bit. Okay, so let's see what else. Wow, we finished this page in record time. It's unusual for me. Um, one of the things I was kind of thinking about doing since we have a little extra time here, because these are done 
pages over here. Let's go ahead and put this back in here. Just seeing if I was going to use this. I'm not going to use it right now. I'll keep it for another point in the book. Um, just seeing, I have these little pieces hanging around. Do I want to use them for anything? Oh, that's nice there. Well, I like that. Let's put that there. That's a nice, and it finishes that off nicely. Gives a little topper to it all. Use the uhu. Now, I think what I'm going to do, though, is I had this idea to see if I could use that ink on fabric. I have this, this vintage, um, sorry, sorry, silk. It's the inside of a kimono. That's not sorry here. I meant to say kimono. I'm saying sorry silk and then saying it's a kimono. It's a kimono silk. Oh, come on. Let's go down nicely. Okay. I see that's translucent too. So you're still going to see a bit of what's underneath it, but see how it just kind of finishes it off that top. It kind of makes the top come back down versus kind of going off the edge there. Okay. So let's put this over here for right now. So the idea is I had was that I had was this is a piece of, it's the inside of a kimono sleeve or something like that. And I thought, I wonder what it'd be like if I stamp an edge. And then I had this slide, remember. And I might actually take this slide and cover it with some vintage um, paper, you know, like, and then just have a bit of text peeking through. I don't know. I was just thinking. But I want to see how it... Let's just see how it prints. For no other reason than we have the extra time and let's just <clears throat> have stuff made. Even if I don't use it on this one, at least, you know, oops, it's ready to go for another page spread. And that way, if you like the idea, you can make some too. Okay. So let me just get, I kind of want to just get a whole, let's just do the whole thing on here. So let's get the ink and the brush. I like the Sumi brush. I mean, you could use any paint brush on here, I'm sure. But I find I like the way it holds the ink, you know, so it doesn't get too much on here. It's just the design of these paint brushes. They're designed to kind of hold the ink down in the well of the brush. Um, and then kind of release it slowly. And I find that it works nicely for doing them on the uh, the stamp. But I'm sure any brush would work. Just some that because I'm not getting a lot on here, which is nice, so it's not like running down into the stencil. And I kind of holding it on its side so that I'm just kind of brushing across the top of the the stamp. I think I came back to this technique because I'm playing with the different ways that I want to work with stamps as I'm creating this this line of stamps and um, and you know and I want them to look like authentic <laughs> as much as possible since I'm working with a lot of old um, documents and stuff so I wanted to you know come you know just visit different techniques of um, of using your stamps more in, in non-traditional ways. 
you know, not being married to the stamp pad. Okay. Let's see. I know it's going to bleed because it's fabric. And that's okay. And so let's flip it. Okay. Oh my goodness, this is good, guys. Oh, look at that. Didn't even need to be down there very long either. Because I didn't want it to over bleed. And it's it's going to bleed some underneath. Let me just... It's going to bleed some on this silk, but it's so pretty. See how it's, it's bleeding up there? Look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. So we're going to let that have dry and then we're just gonna if it's anything left i like to over stamp because these papers then you can tea stain them so you can just clean your pad you know oh that made a good print <clears throat> that there you can clean it off and then you still have you know and then once you stain it these papers you can use too everything gets used okay good Alrighty. <clears throat> this right here is really it's bleeding into the thing, which is nice. Let me just grab my sorry for the noise here, but let's just dry this up. I think if I stop it, it won't bleed as much into the fabric because it'll just dry down. I don't mind some bleeding, but I don't want all the ink to bleed away. Okay. Okay. So that's good. I love it. Yeah, go grab all your old slips and because even like old slips and stuff we don't use and lingerie and things like that. They all can be ripped up <laughs> and turned into this type of stuff. Because this is silk. Even if you just go to the thrift store, I'm looking for some papers. I want to go ahead and cover this. We have a little time. Hang out because I finished that page in record time. So let's just go ahead and I wonder if I could use this. If I can line this up. Looks like I can. Okay. That's dry. Let's go ahead and put, I'm going to put some of the Giotto on this slide. So this is, um, oh my goodness. I need to clean this because it is stuck. Um, this is a slide, and you know, like just, it wasn't even vintage. I colored it on this side for something I was working on. But I think I'm going to go with this side, which is, it's, it, you know how the slides are two parts and you break them open and the little film is inside? That's what I did. I just opened a slide thing up. And these you can find at thrift stores, at flea markets. I see them a lot at the Goodwill. Sometimes they're just trays of them. I try to look at them and see if there's anything interesting that I would want to keep um, to use in my work. <laughs> So let's get this down there. And then, this is two-sided, so let me see if I can just kind of lay this down where I want it. Okay. So just give it a little, so 
something around the side there. Let's go ahead and cut it there. This is just some Asian paper. It's vintage, vintage. And, um, you know, all these kind of things, even just whatever you can get your hands on, like scout your flea markets and stuff for anything, even if it's, it doesn't have to be a particular, you know, country or something like that. I mean, I've gotten a lot of these Asian ones, but, you know, if you can't find them, just whatever appeals to you, but that's old. It, it's, the fact that the papers are old, I think that's what makes it really good. That's what gives it a certain, you know, authenticity and what have you. So I'm just going to cut this a little closer. And um, then we'll get that inside out. Okay. That's pretty cool. Let's just get my um, X-Acto. I'm just going to try to cut it out. And then by that time, our other piece should be dry. And we'll save it for next week. How's that? I figured since we had the extra time and it was on my desk and it was something I was thinking about doing, why not do it while we're hanging out? And then guys could play around with, oh, that came out nicely. And then this piece I can still use. Oh, I like this. It just looks like an old slide now. Like, you know, gives it a little vintage quality. Okay. Now this piece right here, I'm going to go ahead and rip. Oh my goodness. I hope it rips. It doesn't. Try, test it first. If it, no, it doesn't want to rip. It does. It's going to, it'll rip this way though. Watch, but it doesn't want to rip the other way. So what I do is if it doesn't want to, if, it, if it's the wrong direction, then I rip it and then um, then cut it, you know, we just need to cut it this way. And then I pull it just to kind of get another, to get it that sort of ripped edge. These aren't the sharpest scissors. Okay. So then what you want to do is just, you know, to kind of get that little weird edge, just kind of pull and fray it and so it kind of does better that way so let's just see here's our book let me see moving along oh this would be perfect because of the color of the page so let's just see it would need to go this way so we're going to play around with this next week and look at this little frame oh i love this frame oh my goodness even just to kind of put this frame on this page somewhere. And then look, this age is, this script that's over there is so beautiful and delicate. So maybe next week I'll work with some translucent. We'll see. But anyhow, that's the direction we're going in. So if you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a, a thumb up. And because um, that always helps to invite more people into our community because YouTube pushes it out. You guys know that. By now, I say it enough. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please hit that bell, hit all, so that you get all the notifications. We do this premiere every Saturday, um, hang out, and we have a lot of fun catching up. And I really enjoy this time with you all on Saturday mornings. I really look forward to it. So happy creating, enjoy your week, enjoy your time in your studio, enjoy your family, enjoy walks, enjoy your pets, all the things that, you know, make us happy. Alrighty. Take care. Bye-bye.